Healing Art with Henry. Woohoo! Hi, welcome to Healing Art with Henry. I'm Henry and today we're going to talk about something that's uh, kind of a challenging subject to talk about, but I think it's really important because it is kind of the fundamental thing that brings most of us to uh, needing to heal ourselves. And the subject's going to be on addiction today. So we're going to talk about addiction and I'm going to paint a picture and we're going to talk about overcoming addiction and um, and how uh, it helps our lives and hurts our lives and um, and all the aspects of it. So thanks for joining me. So when I think about addiction, and I've dealt with a lot of addiction in my life, and when I think about it, what kind of comes up for me is uh, um, kind of the feeling I get from overcoming addiction. And uh, when I've overcome addiction in my life, I feel uh, like life was really one way and then I overcame an addiction and then my life becomes another way. And so I'm going to kind of uh, paint a symbol that kind of represents that kind of the freedom from addiction and that feeling. And it's not like the feeling happens right away. Like a lot of times when we overcome an addiction, it takes a while for the feeling of freedom to come. But um, I think it's a, a feeling of freedom and um, and celebration when we are no longer imprisoned by something that was imprisoning us. So I'm going to start by painting a picture of a little squirrel. And this little squirrel is a symbol that I paint often and it's the celebration squirrel. So I've overcome a lot of addictions in my life. I've overcome um, addictions to, to substances, uh, alcohol and drugs and um, different things like that. And, um, for me, food is a big one. It's a, it's a hard one for me. Um, sugar. When I was 24, my older brother passed away. And when he passed away, I was left with a lot of grief and a lot of confusion and pain and anger and um, all the things that kind of heavy grief kind of cause. Me and him were really close in age. And I, at that time in my life, at 24, I decided that I would start going to this place in Bellingham and uh, order a big bowl of ice cream every day. And it just kind of made me feel better, you know? It was like I was having a really hard time and just that big bowl of ice cream kind of like while I was eating it made me feel better and um, that kind of became this thing where I did it every day and it was kind of the first time in my life that I really started gaining weight and um, and just kind of created this feeling worse about myself thing and the ice cream thing kind of continued and and the reason I bring that up is because I feel like a lot of addiction is caused from grief and um, trauma and 
and grief and our need for uh, feeling good. And so we kind of create, we start doing things basically so we can feel good and uh, we just kind of continue on doing those things because they give us a little bit of um, uh, a little rough rush of endorphins or um, some serotonin, do dopamine, some feel good, feel good chemicals that happen in the brain. Um, and it doesn't really matter what it is. Um, it could be ice cream. It could be um, addiction to like a relationship or um, an obsession with a person or something like that or uh, um, it could be drug related, it could be heroin or um, now I'm just kind of painting some, some more symbolism into this painting. So the squirrel was in chains and uh, he's kind of breaking out of them. I remember being a cigarette smoker. I was a really, I smoked a lot of cigarettes and uh, I started cigarette smoking at a really young age. And I remember uh, there was this one time I was in Laos. Uh, this one time I was in Laos and there was um, cigarettes there were like 25 cents a pack. And I was, I was a cigarette smoker at that time. I probably smoked um, a pack a day. And when I got to that country, I started um, smoking like three packs a day because they were so cheap and I could afford them. And I was always saying you know, this funny idea, well, you can't afford not to smoke when they're this cheap. And so I started smoking three packs a day instead of a pack a day. And it kind of changed my idea of um, really feeling like imprisoned by something. I really felt like uh, something like kind of owned me and I had to do it. And it was like every time I had the thought or compulsion to have a cigarette, I would just have one. And um, uh, it became such a like life struggle for me. And so what I'm doing now in this painting is I'm kind of creating some, kind of doing some under underpainting work. I'm creating like the uh, some of the shadows. Before I start adding color and stuff, it kind of gives me a sense of the compositional layout and how it kind of all looks together. So what are some of the rewards of letting go of an addiction? And for me, uh, becoming a, I become more available to people. I become more emotionally available to people when I'm not in an active addiction. So the big question is how do we overcome addiction? And for all of us, that's kind of a different, there's a different answer to it. We're all a little different, we're all built a little different. We all have different stories. We all have different bodies and minds. For me, I've had to like, I've really had to hit like rock bottom with my things before and kind of find a rock bottom before I am able to really quit something. I have to really feel it on a very visceral level, uh, kind of shake to my soul kind of level that, my, that I can't do a certain behavior anymore. I can't function in the, the world the way I want to. Um, 
And so then I, that's usually when I make a big fundamental change in my life. And it's kind of extreme, I kind of have a, some reason the extremes and the big polarities with things are a big theme in my life or an all or nothing kind of thing. And, and that's not the case for everybody, but for me, that's how it works. And that's how I've overcome some big addictions in my life is just kind of getting to the point where I'm sick and tired of it. I'm sick and tired of the consequences that it's causing. And Really, I'm sick and tired of not being in control and letting something else control me, whether it's a person or it's sugar or alcohol or heroin or um, whatever it is. There's been all these different things in my life that have let external things that I've let control me. And it's when I, I kind of reach out for help and um, kind of admit that I have the problem and that something has a grip on me. And that's kind of where I start with. And then I kind of observe myself like watching this thing control my daily behavior. And I, a lot of times in my best with my best inner resources can't seem to stop the behavior. And so a lot of times it's just communication and admitting to myself and to other people what's going on, uh, trusted people. And then I'm kind of able to move on from it. And it's funny that the thing that caused the addiction, the desire to feel good, is the same thing that ends the addiction. It's the same desire. It's the desire to feel good. So when I look at people in the, in the throes of addiction, and I see somebody on the streets hooked on methamphetamines or something. I think about that, that their life might be in an unmanageable place, but it wasn't because they were a bad person to start with. It's just because they had a desire to feel really good at some point and they were tired of feeling bad. And so they started experimenting with things that made them feel good, which is, um, a very reasonable thing to do in this on this planet. All, all creatures do it. All plants do it. All animals do it. Everything is basically trying to thrive and feel good. I want to walk you through a little exercise. I want you to just take a second. I want to take a second and just feel something in your body. Feel if there's something tense or tight or sore or anything. Just feel it for a second. Just feel that feeling in your body. Maybe you're feeling a little anxious. Just identify that feeling in your body and pay attention to it for a second. Maybe your big toe hurts or you have some tightness in your chest. or you got a little bit of a headache or something. Just find the feeling. 
and pay attention to it. Become aware of it. And as you become aware of that feeling, just be with the feeling. Don't try to change the feeling. Just be with it. Imagine yourself in a swim pool. You're floating in a swim pool and that feeling is floating alongside of you in the swim pool. Just you and that feeling are floating together. You and that sensation. You're not judging the sensation. You're not trying to change the sensation. You're just floating with it. Climb up the ladder and just get yourself out of the swim pool. And just look at that feeling that you floated with. And just let it keep floating in the swim pool. I'll get a towel and dry off and get dressed. and just walk away from the swim pool. And that's kind of true for all our things that we struggle with. Sometimes it takes a while to get it, and that's okay. Because once you get it, once you break free from that thing holding you back, that thing that's controlling your life, the thing that's making your life unmanageable, Once you're sick and tired of it enough, you start experimenting with different ways of being and different ways to get out of it. Eventually you'll find the way. And it's just having faith in yourself. Because I believe in you. I believe in your power. And I believe that you're bigger than your addictions. And I believe that you're bigger than the things that you feel like have control over you. But as I finish this, I want to remind you to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. So I can continue painting and sharing my ideas with you. And I sure hope they help. And just remember there is a good way to get the most good feelings out of life. And that's what I wish for you, is that you can have the most good feelings in your life possible. Well, thanks for joining me and we will see you next time.
Whoa! Hey! Whoa! Peekaboo! 